Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Castanelli and I'm super excited to teach you how to use the Shortcuts app. So it's been super awesome to see everybody downloading the Shortcuts app and playing around, but I've seen some confusion on how to use it and I wanted to clear some of that up for you. So I think one of the challenges of the Shortcuts app that I mentioned in the last video was that Siri suggestions aren't the same as the Siri Shortcuts app. The Shortcuts app has a bunch of different actions that you can pass content into and out of and you can interact with them in a bunch of different ways. Whereas Siri suggestions, on the other hand, actually entirely operate as a standalone function. When you're working with the Shortcuts app for the first time, content has to move in between the actions, and that can be pretty confusing, especially since Siri Shortcuts themselves just kind of work. It does have a little bit of a learning curve, but I know that you can get through it. So when you're in Shortcuts, you'll see the library and then the gallery. So the gallery has a bunch of different options that you can explore, and there's a bunch of examples in there that you can try out, but after a while, you'll probably want to start building your own. When you're in the shortcuts library, you can tap create shortcut to create a new shortcut. So once you've created a shortcut, it'll open you into the shortcuts editor. Normally, once you want to get back into this screen on any other shortcut, you just tap the little dot 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 there up in the upper right corner of each shortcut. In the shortcuts editor, you'll see that there's a bunch of space for you to drag in actions. When you're on the iPhone, you can tap on the little tray down at the bottom, and there's going to be a bunch of different actions in there suggested for you. Once you tap into the search field, Field, you'll see all the different categories. There's favorites, series suggestions, and the scripting actions, and then a group of content types. And then below, there's a full list of all the apps that you can interact with. Once you tap on one of the actions in the list, you can start to see more details about how that action works. And if it's a content type, you'll see the content that can be passed in or out as a result. Once you start to drag these actions into the shortcuts editor, you'll start to see connections form between them. If an action passes something as a result that can be accepted as input into the next action, they'll automatically be connected by a tiny little line. But chances are you're gonna see a bunch of spaces where the line doesn't connect, and that can be a little confusing at first. All of the series suggestions actions cannot accept input or output something that I definitely want them to add in the future. But for now, I'm pretty content with the 250 actions that Shortcuts already has that can interact with each other. What makes it possible for all these actions to hook into each other is what's called the content graph. So this is the main tool that powers Shortcuts. It's an intelligent engine that basically takes all the content that's accepted as input and then maps it out to different branches for all the little pieces. If you have a photo, there's an image, but then there's also text that equates to the name of the photo. In between actions, Shortcuts is intelligently determining what to change it into for the next action. This is why you don't just get a bunch of errors like you might in programming, instead a lot of the times it just works. But then again, sometimes it won't and that can be pretty frustrating. It seems like it should just all happen magically, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. Here's where it's important to get the order right, because when one action passes content into the next, it has to accept it properly, otherwise it might fail. One tip that I got from Federico Vitici from Mac Stories a few years ago was to start with the first and last actions in your shortcut. If you look in the scripting section, you'll see a bunch of advanced actions that you can use to do things like set up an if conditional so that if one thing happens, then another thing happens. Or you can do things like ask for input, so you can type in text, a number, or pick a date. Or you can do things like choose from menu, where you can pick from a bunch of different options, and then, depending on what you choose, something different happens. Combining all these together can honestly be a little confusing. You have a bunch of scripting actions that do all this programming stuff you've maybe never even heard of before. All these content actions pass input and output, and you're not really sure when to use which one where. And then all the series suggestions just kind of happen in the background and you don't have to do anything. But it really is helpful to think of series suggestions as separate from the shortcuts actions. These are all created by third-party apps and so you kind of have to depend on the developer to build the right functionality for what you want. Plus this makes a practical difference when you run them from Siri. And again, I wanna emphasize here how the shortcuts app is not named Siri Shortcuts because really the Siri Shortcuts feature of an individual shortcut just adds it to Siri to be triggered. And then if the actions can work in the background, they'll all happen. But if you have to choose something from a menu, you have to open up the Shortcuts app and do it there. I think this is the biggest part that's holding people up because it seems like everything in the Shortcuts app should work with Siri. That's kind of how they pitched it after all. But to be honest, this is a third-party app that Apple bought and integrated, so I think we're kind of lucky that we got as much as we did already. I've said this to some of my friends, but really Siri Suggestions is coming in from the bottom and Siri Shortcuts is coming in from the top, and there is that middle layer that's just kind of missing, and we need to be able to 
bridge the gap from just using Siri suggestions and building full shortcuts. But once you're armed with that information, you can kind of go into it and work with what you have so far. One of the biggest tips I have for troubleshooting, also from Federico, is to use the show alert action. When you place content in the show alert action, it will pop up with an alert that you can press OK or cancel with. This has a practical benefit of letting you see what content is being passed from that action, but it also just lets you cancel instead of continuing through the course of your shortcut. The other important thing to cover, but I'll only do so very briefly, is variables. These are represented by little tokens that you'll see throughout your shortcut that represent the output of a previous action. They're called variables because they vary each time. Just like when you ask Siri for the weather and she says, today it's 71 degrees, that 71 is really a variable that she changes depending on what the actual value is. It can be a little confusing, but this basically lets you take the output of one action and then set it aside and bring it back again later. That way you don't have to have a completely perfect flow of content from the top of your shortcut all the way to the bottom. Instead, you can get to a certain point, stop, leave the variable aside, and then use get variable later to retrieve that information and pull it back into your shortcut. What's even more amazing compared to traditional programming is that Shortcut automatically stores the output of every single action that has a result as what's called a magic variable. When you're trying to fill out information in a field or you're using the get variable action to retrieve content that you had stored earlier, you can tap on the little wand icon and then select the result of any previous action and it'll automatically be grabbed for you. You don't have to set variable over and over again unless you wanna give it a specific name. That little variable token will then represent the output of that content. If you have a choose from list, you'll have chosen item as the variable. Then you can tap on the variable and change what you want it to turn into. This uses the content graph engine that I was talking about earlier. When you pass in an image, you can coerce it into being just the name, which then ends up being a text output of the file name. Again, variables only work with the content type actions. They don't work with series suggestions because they don't actually output any results. But you can still use all of these in tandem. You can have a series suggestion that does something, then a content type that passes information into the next one, stores it for later as a variable, then gets retrieved and used in another content type action, maybe along with some scripting actions. So I wanna give you a practical example now because you can be told as much as you want, but actually seeing it in action really helps you learn. So a quick shortcut that I built that actually has proven to be very useful is something that I call get stuff done. Basically, I wanted a shortcut that would help me focus. And so what it does is use the current date, then it passes it into the adjust date action, which adds one hour to the current time. So an hour from now. Then in the new do not disturb action, you're able to set do not disturb until a specific time. In that time field, I tapped on the little wand and then added in the adjust date variable. So basically when I trigger this shortcut, it turns on do not disturb for one hour and immediately starts playing music for me. Unfortunately, this is all day by Girl Talk, and so it's not available in Apple Music because it's a mashup, but if you can get it elsewhere online, I highly suggest it. It's freaking awesome. So basically, when I trigger this shortcut, it turns on Do Not Disturb for one hour and immediately starts playing music for me. So in this video, I explained the basics of how some of the actions work together, gave you a little teaser of how variables work, and then also demoed one of my personal workflows. But there's too much to learn in just one video, so I'm gonna stop here for now. I wanna know what questions you have about shortcuts, and where are you getting stuck? What's the problems that you're running into? And also, what do you wish you could do that it doesn't? Many people are asking me whether you can do things like trigger shortcuts automatically based on your location or a time of day, or they're hoping to dictate text into Siri and have that get passed into the course of your shortcut. Those things don't work right now, but those are definitely very common requests. I hope we'll see that one day soon. I also want to let you guys know about my podcast that I do, Supercomputer, where I talk more about shortcuts in a more casual environment with my friend Alex Cox of Cards Against Humanity in the awesome podcast, Do By Friday. I also just wanted to say that I really appreciate all the support and patience everyone has had for me so far. Last week was my first ever YouTube video and I made some basic mistakes like leaving autofocus on or having the music too loud in the background. So sorry for that, but thanks for sticking around. Next week in my video, I'm going to share my 10 favorite shortcuts plus demonstrate all the different ways that you can run shortcuts so that everybody can get up to full speed as quick as possible. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at, at Matt Cassinelli, C-A-S-S-I-N-E-L-L-I. -S 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 -E and you can find me on my website at MatthewCassinelli.com. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more shortcuts videos. Hey Siri, make fun of me. Running your shortcut. Shortcut says, thou droning dismal dreaming pigeon egg. Done.